Well, David, we're standing at the entrance of Brookside Kennels. You've been here a while now, haven't you? Yeah, 28 years. Um, when we came down from Sunderland, we, we had a base in Sandy, and we was in the process of buying that. But when we actually came down looking for places to move to, I turned, I, I went to see a friend of mine at the end of the lane, and I turned around and I thought, oh, I like this place, I'd uh, like to own this one day. And then uh, as we were in the process of buying Sandy, um, this came on the market, which coincided with when Julie was heavily pregnant with Patrick. Um, so I sort of jumped at the chance. So a friend of ours helped us out, helped me to deposit, um, and, we, and we bought it. Uh, I think we know the previous tenant, don't we? Yeah, Ginger McGee um, was here. Um, he, I think he was here for a couple of years. Uh, so we did a deal with him, um, you know, and that went really smoothly. So uh, it was great. And it's changed a lot since John was here. He, you know, he had a smaller kennel than us, and uh, but we sort of developed it on. And when this was all this was just lawn, and we we sort of you know, introduced a few things and uh, the fencing, and we spent a lot of money over the years. Uh, you know, it's, you know it's with, with a place like this, it is just a money pit really. Obviously, the family history we know it's been well documented on RPG TV. Mother, a multiple champion trainer, late father, a derby winning trainer. Uh, you spent some time as a Sunderland trainer, 28 years here at Brookside Kennels. Almost like a fine wine, though, you are, David, because I think in recent years, I think you've just been far more successful. Would that be fair? Yeah, probably. I mean, like, we, we concentrated on getting the business up and running, of course. You know, we, we relied a lot on our own breed, didn't we? Uh, and we've always had nice dogs, but we never had the amount that we've had over the you know, recent years. Um, you know, we, to be honest with you, without owners putting that type of dog with her, we can't do it. You know, they're the ones that make the difference. You know, there's a lot of good trainers around, and you know, you give them the dogs, they'll do equally as good. Um, so, you know, you're only as good as your, your owners. But I suppose. We've, yeah, in the last few years, people have recognised they want to put Well, I've, I've got a, a list here. Arcady, Troy Zico, Brookside Richie, Tempin, Shrewd Call, Troy Bella, Troy, Susie Q. You know, there seemed to be a gap after, say, Potto Storm when you shared the spoils in the Grand National to, to one or two of those grounds that I mentioned in terms of big race winners. Was, was, there, a, was there a particular point where, for you, it changed? No, I mean, after... Well, with um, the Potto dogs, they sort of got into their head they couldn't have anything better, so they didn't buy any more. Um, or, you know, uh, so that sort of thing. But like I said, we used to knock around with, you know, 40, 50 open race winners a year. We always won a final. I think there's only been one year we haven't won a final. Um, but in recent times, um, no, it's just sort of come together, you know. It's, they've developed into good dogs. We're lucky enough. We've, we had back-to-back top-class sprinters. They helped the cause. Um, you know, they sort of get you back on the map. And uh, you know, one or two others have come along. We, we, we've had some big support of Mick Gologley, um, John Hisley when he was alive. Um, Kelly Searle's been a massive support. Um, and now Dave Fernwinter. And I've got um, the likes of Dave Sullivan, who's got the pro dogs. You know, he's got some nice dogs coming through. Um, as well as George Watson and you know, one or two others. So. And you're pushing for the top six and trainers championships or judgment nights, etc. every single year now? Well, yeah, we, we have been. Um, this year, we, we will fall short. Um, like, I think we had um, last, the last couple of years, of going into the last, at the end of the year, I thought, we've got a really good team of dogs here. We, we might be able to do something next year. Unfortunately, a lot of the good big guns got injured. Um, old Fort BT got injured, um, I had a fabulous pup got injured, um, joint suprema, um, and it, so it's made it hard, but now we've sort of gone through a transition where we've got so many youngsters, and the, the, the real talented dogs that were there are on the sidelines, so they're like long term, like Arcade and Shrewd Calls retired, um, so that makes it difficult, so now we're working on what's coming through next. So we've also sort of had to take a back seat um, rather than try and chase around winning things, work on what you've got and develop them. Um, and hopefully these pups will learn 
give us a good team for next year. Well, David Mullins has won the Romford Puppy Cup no less than five times. He's got four semi-finalists this year. David, this is Romeo Cypher, bred and owned by Dave Firmager. You had the one-two together last year. Tell us about this fella. Well, he's, he's relatively new. They came in about six to eight weeks ago and with the process of you know qualifying dogs these days. It took quite a long time to get them onto the card. Um, but to be honest with you, they've just been astonishing. You know, their first trials, the times they were doing, we just couldn't believe what we were watching. You know, it, was, it wasn't expected. We knew they were like nice pups, but uh, never expected them to be doing anything like the what they are. And this fella, in the first round, the heats, fantastic. UK debut, three length winner, easy. Oh, I wouldn't say it was easy, <laughs> but um, it, was, it, it was very pleasing because it was his first time under lights, first race of his life. You know, he's never seen a crowd before. Um, you know, and usually they make a mistake, but this this litter, this although they're green, they're, they're very forward in you know their mannerisms. Um, they do nothing wrong, and they're very very brave at the corner as well. And this fellow, you know, he, he possesses that little bit of early as well. How many have you got in the litter? Uh, six. One of the bitches in season, um, yeah. and there's, there's five dogs. Excellent. Now he's up against Droopy's Donor, one of the, the original anti post favourites. So. If it perhaps wasn't easy uh, in the heats, it could just get a deal harder in the semis. Well, you, you only want to qualify, so um, you know we take from that. Um, pups, especially at this 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 stage, they make if they make a mistake, they're out. Um, so you know, just got you only got to concentrate on what we can do, um, and hopefully he'll trap. And uh, if he can make the bend, we'll see see what happens. Romeo hot shot and Romeo mission one two last year. Have we got. A, Hot shot or a mission amongst these? <laughs> to be honest with you, there's, the litter has surprised us that much. I always go off what they, their first trials, and if they train on, there's no reason why these couldn't be a bit special. Well, David, two semi finalists uh, in the second semi final. The first one, Trident Sydney, the white and brindle. You've got the black dog here, which is Crusade, it's, uh, a brother of uh, Cypher. Ran third in the heat, will come on. Yeah, definitely come on. I mean, they should all come on, you know, even if it's just for fitness. But with these being so inexperienced and after they qualified, they got ill. Um, so we couldn't do a lot with them then either. Um, so basically, they're coming, you know, really fresh. Yeah, they're, they're nowhere near race fit, so I'd expect them all to improve. And that bare form of Romeo Crusade behind Brinkley's Ginger, one of the more impressive winners on the night. Yeah, that was, um, it was extremely impressive. Um, um, I didn't see that run coming, but it, it, it arrived. Um, you know, it's going to make it difficult. But um, no, I mean, we're, we're happy with the, the way things have worked out. We're, you know, just getting them to qualify. We know they'll they should um, improve. So as long as they get it right on the night, they've got chances. Okay, owned of course by breeder Dave uh, Firmiger, Trident Sydney, one of your uh, uh, most loyal owners, Kelly Searle, along with Lee Calcutt as well. And again, did pretty well in the heat. Yeah, he did. I mean, we've been looking for a, you know, a run out of him. He, he is, we think of quite a bit of him, but he's just, he's a very green. He's been, he just thinks haven't gone his way so far. You know, you think he's going to do it and then it hasn't happened. But um, yeah, that was a big step. And I think getting his head in front will, you know, give him a, a lot of confidence, albeit he um, got beat in the end. But um, no, I think, I think he should improve with each one as well. Drawn side by side, that a problem? Actually, the draw prior to the race, I mean, because we've always had Sydney seeded wide prior to that, and in all his trials, he's you know he's kept his line, um, albeit cuts in at the bend. But in his uh, after we probably trolled him back after they, I had him off for a month. Um, I gave him a trial, and they didn't um, didn't go as well as I wanted. But so I gave him another trial and. The trial they did in the second time is what I expected the first time. So I asked the track to get them a race on the Monday before, get a quick run into them. Um, and I think that'll fetch them on. But he, you know, he, for a dog that's always been one, he just turned left out of the boxes, went straight to the rail, which gave us a dilemma. What do we do? So, um, so we seated him middle. Um, he drew, drew trap to, but he pretty much kept his line to the corner and he moved off slightly. I, I don't think the draw will be too much of an issue.
Perhaps the opponents might just be Kulavani Mercy, just red hot in the second semi-final. Brinkley's Ginger in the second semi-final. The pace of Betty's Jack as well. It's going to be tough. Yeah, they didn't go too bad, did they? Yeah. But the thing is, they're drawn side by side as well. So um, with the amount of pace that they, they possess, you'd, you'd think if they both do that, one of them's got to fall away. I can't, you know, hopefully he will. I, I, I think these can still improve anyway, so... So you're happy and you know the, the vagaries are, and what can happen in Rotha Puppy Cups. I mean, they're inexperienced greyhounds, a missed break, no margin for error there. Oh, you saw that in the first round. You know, some of the favourites went out, um, they make a mistake and they're gone. You know, and, that, and that's, that's what happens in puppy races, especially when a lot of the pups are so young. Um, you know, if very few dogs are that good, they can make a mistake and get away with it. So this is Droopy's Custard, a.k.a. the General. Tell me why. Well, General Custer, you know, the, uh, the, the from Soldier and the States. Seventh Cavalry. Yeah, right? yeah, some or whatever cavalry it was, I know it was General Custer. But when he come over, we, we, he was supposed to be quite good. So we said, well, he'll either get called Rhubarb or he'll get called Custard, uh, General. And uh, so far, he was quite good, so um, we called him General. Well, he's bred in the purple, isn't he? I mean, a little brother of Droopy's donut. Is owned by George Watson, yeah? Yeah, I think George um, has got a share or owns donut as well. So, um, yeah, he was delighted with him the other night. Really delighted, so, which, was, which was nice to see. So. And I suppose compared to the other semi-finalists, a little bit more experienced. Yeah, well, you expect Droopy's dogs to um, have that more experience. That You know, they tend to come over and they know what they're doing straight away. Um, you know, they're easy, pretty much easy to tell train in that respect um, you don't usually expect him to have limitations but um, he, yeah, he, he when he started off he, he, he looked good but we had him off for a month we found a little problem um, he wasn't quite coming away um, so we had that sorted and hopefully we'll put that right I was going to say there was a, a break in his training as such but that was a big improvement in the heats fantastic one. yeah yeah it was um, but pleasing to see <laughs> He's up uh, against one or two heat winners. He's going to have to do everything right. How do you see the race? Um, well, again, we changed his seed in, you know, from wide to middle. Um, because, again, he, he, he moves in on the run to the corner, so um, we didn't know what to expect. I think, you know, he, he definitely wants it. Um, if he can come away like he did, he's got enough early to... And he's brave at the corner. Um, he's got enough early to um, handle himself. So, you know, I think he, he needs to be turning that corner in front or thereabouts. Okay, numerically you had a pretty strong entry, four through to the semi-finals of the Romford Puppy Cup. We, we know what can happen. Who's got the best chance of, of winning the Puppy Cup if that was to happen? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether I've got it or somebody else has got it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy with, with ours. I know ours have got a lot of improvement to come. Um, you know, that just in experience and fitness, race fitness. Um, so one thing you do need is luck you know, and, uh, so we're happy i think sometimes it's harder to get them to the competition than to actually win it not there's not not saying that you know you're going to win it but you know, just get them there all fit and right um ready to take the chance you know, and just take what happens have we got any derby dogs potentially next year amongst them uh i tell you what we've got such a young kennel and a lot of them are qualified in a manner which we don't expect um, it, there's a lot of potential there. I think about a dozen pups there, all, all told. Um, I think some of them, like the Romeo litter, some of them are going to be short runners. But there's one in there which I do like. Um, I like them all, but there's one in particular that I do like. Um, and he, he may uh, grow into a really nice thing. Thanks for watching. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. No problem. Well, Dave, five times a, a Romford Puppy Cup winning trainer, and this was the 2020 winner, Tempin. How is he? He looks an absolute picture. Oh, he's in, he's in great order. I mean, like, he's, he's fit enough to run. Um, you know, he still holds pride of the place. So, uh, you know, he's, he pretty much rules the rules for Fantastic. I mean, great memories of, of his victory. Oh, yeah, yeah, because um, I knew, again, he's pretty similar to the Romeo dogs. He was... He was nowhere near ready um, at the time going into it, you know, his condition-wise and everything. And we, he was a, a little bit of an unknown. Um, we knew he could run, but 
how good he was. He really didn't know at the time. Um, and he just progressed. Once he drew, drew trap one in the final, I knew he had a chance then. He was such a tight runner. Um, he, he, I can remember it vividly. Um, once he turned the corner, you know, was, that was our third pub cup win. And it was, it was nice because it had been a long time since the other two. Well, you go you go back to Living Jewel, I think 2003, Vermoose 2004. Yeah. Memories of those? Oh, well, Vermoose, we, um, it was home bread. And my sister-in-law, Mandy, she owned him. So that, that was a bit special. Um, Living Jewel, I remember, I didn't enter nothing in the Puppy Cup and Pedro Dow phoned me up and said, uh, you haven't entered. So I said, well, I haven't really got anything. So I said, well, the only one I've really got is Living Jewel. And it's only A3 at the time. And he said, well, we can't have a puppy cup unless you put one in it. So I said, oh, for a minute. Bang on. He well done, Peter. <laughs> and he does claim it. <laughs> and rightly so. And then, of course, ten pin, which sparked a three in a row. And you must have fond memories of a Brookside Richie, and he's still doing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Brookside Richie, he was actually bought for the puppy cup. Um, the owner wanted the dog to run in the puppy cup. And a guy we in Northern Ireland, Belfast, John McCullum, John McCullum um, he sourced him for us. Um, he actually bred him, he sent him over. And, uh, so going into the puppy cup, that was a different um, different style because we knew he was the real deal. And there were, it was quite interesting because Paul Young had one, but I think the puppy of Patchy was a flying machine at the time as well. And they came into it, you know, heading the market. Um, both front runners and um, unfortunately for them and probably possibly fortunate for us and they had to withdraw this um, but you know Brookside Richie he, we knew he could do it so that was a uh, yeah that was a bit special and still winning races for Jimmy yeah. Finnick you you obviously still follow his career I suppose no I don't actually <laughs> I try not to I don't want to he's, you know he's just he's gone that's yeah that's it look. So fond memories of winning the Puppy Cup with Brookside Richie and then Romeo hot shot to make it three in a row and the one two for good measure. Yeah, yeah, I mean like we we had, there was a bit of pressure on us that year because we had a really good team going in and there was a lot of good dogs going into the competition but we, we actually had a team. Whether we had um, the right one going into it or not, we didn't know, but we knew we had a good team and going for your third one, you know, there was a lot of people asking you get the puppy cup or whatever it is, so you can do it three times. Um, so that added its own pressure in itself. So, but to actually qualify three into a final, to have um, Bell's legacy, who you know performed admirably well to get to the final, and then in the in the final, um, I, I actually walked in hot shot only because I walked in, in the, one of the earlier heats. So, and I remember putting him in the box and I'm walking away and I thought, well, this can't happen. You, know, you, you can't win it three times in a row. Um, and as soon as the mids went up, I knew we'd won it. You know, we just rocked it down. The three in a row, five overall. There's no real pressure this year, is there? Or do you always feel pressure? Yeah, there is actually, because not only because we put pressure on ourselves. Um, because, you know, going into it, like earlier in the year, it was like, what you got for the puppy gun? And we haven't really got a lot, actually, um, at the time, which we didn't. So we might have this, might have that. And then the general and Sydney were there lurking about, so we thought, well, they could, they could develop. And then Dave um, sent that litter in, um, and they're sort of like, well, okay, now we might have a team. So the pressure comes from ourselves because when you've won it, you want to keep winning it. You know, you know that's the likelihood of that happening is, is unrealistic. You know, but you still go in there trying to win it. And good luck in the semi-final. Yeah, thank you. Well, David, we're with the very, very striking Arcady. Um, we're on the gallop here. He's been up here a few times, no doubt. Oh yeah, we used to like when he was before he got injured. He was, you know, we take him on it every day. So uh, yeah, he's used to this. Yeah, he's been one of the stars, I think, of David Mullins' kennel over I mean, the last couple of seasons. Uh, last year, winning the Ken Derby. This year, the RPG TV Juvenile. He is a real star. What's the situation with him? Well. It, he, yeah, you're right. He has been a superstar. And he's, you know, it's been a joy to train. Um, we we had him off for a few weeks and brought him back. And thought I'd take him to Central Park. Unfortunately, he broke his tarsal, central tarsal bone, 
um, but he stopped at the straight away so there was no more damage done um, the cast come off two weeks ago um, so he'll be out for the rest of the year but should make a full recovery and he's owned by Kelly so who yeah. uh, you had shrewd call for Prince of Troy yeah yeah she's um, well, she, I mean, she's I think with Kelly, she, like, she's got a number of dogs. I think she's got about six or seven dogs at the moment. But it doesn't matter whether they're low graders or open racers. You know, she enjoys each and every one of them. But he is an absolute striking ground. And Arcady, he's called Vladimir, I understand? Yeah, yeah, he's, his pet name's Vladimir. Because when he come over, his, um, his original racing name was um, Russian Rocket. And it, he came over just as the outbreak of the uh, Russian-Ukraine war. So... Um, we had to change his name though. <laughs> uh, so you're hoping he's going to be back and maybe maybe next year any sort of targets? Uh, no, no targets at the moment. Um, the main thing is that he comes back. There's, there should be no issues with it, but you know, with dog racing and dogs, you, you don't know. Um, but I don't see any issues for you know coming. Um, we'll leave him off to the end of the year. You know, start qualifying him back and. Uh, go from there there's no he's, rush and he's an absolute pitcher oh yeah the, i mean the, the hard thing with dogs that have had you know serious injuries like that they've still got to come back at the level they they came out of so you know you don't have the you can't go into any maidens or you know low-key races um so it, it just means i've got to do a bit of work <laughs> well here's one of david mullins's runners who perhaps goes under the radar and he shouldn't really 29 times a winner uh, his name is XV Prince, of course. He really is a kennel star, David. Yeah, he is. He's been uh, he's quite timid. Um, come here, come here. Um, yeah, he's, he's been a great dog for us. He's a regular Friday night dog. He's won numerous finals there. He's, you know, being with him, he, I mean, he can post a 23.60 when he hits the front early, but he just lacks top, top class. Ability, you know, if you put in group ones, it probably just falls a little bit short. But you know, on Friday night, he's there to be beaten. He's a real money spinner for his legion of supporters, uh, including Roy Swaby, of course. Yeah, Roy Swaby and Lucy, they're the owners. Um, there's a lodge of firm 15, um, but they're you know, they've, they've really enjoying him. Um, he's you know, he's he's been a big supporter of ours, so um, he's got some pups over there. Actually, half of that litter is his. Okay, we talked about those uh, in due course, but XV Delta, I think, was another one. He's a, another a regular winner, or has been, but uh, but Prince is, is a star in another Friday night win on, yeah, well, last Friday in the final. Yeah, you'd like, I mean, you'd like to have a kennel full of them. Um, they might not win you a group one, but they'll win you plenty of races and you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of them. You know, I'd like to say, if you had half a dozen of these in the kennel, you'd be, you'd be laughing. Absolutely. And you say he's, he's on the timid side, but once he gets yeah, to the track, and he can go with the best. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, he, he forgets all about his nerves at the track, but um, it's just, yeah, he's a little bit timid, but not usually quite like this. But it's interesting when you say about th there's clearly levels. He can do 23, 60 this dog, yeah. but if you put him up against uh, the Golden Sprint types. Yeah, that's the thing. You, you know, you'd think, I mean, he's done, it's not, it's not like a flash in the pan, he's done it like four or five times. But if you did put him in against, you know, in the golden sprint, the likelihood is he'd go out. Because you know, it's, times mean one thing, but class is another thing. And he knows where the winning line is. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's a bit like Arsenal and Chelsea, really, isn't it? <laughs> you guys are a little bit closer to that winning line than we are, but hopefully only temporarily. We'll see. Yeah, yeah you're right. We will see. <laughs> Well, it's a great setup here at Brookside Kennels, David. Uh, you've got the, the paddocks here, two litters of pups uh, here, you, you tell us about? Yeah, they were, well, these were born within days of each other. Um, they're both by Tempin. One's Swaby Lucy Jane, and the other one's Waste Out Susie, which we both had. Um, and so we, they used to run around together, so what happens first thing in the morning, <coughs> we put the pups out together, um, whilst, whilst they, you know, they get on well. Um, I actually look forward to meet, meet each other because they don't live together um, and they, they just get on great, I mean, they're, they're, they're nice pups, I mean, you can see one has got an orange dot on its head where we had to mark it up so we didn't get mixed up um, and, you know, make sure that's done properly, uh, but they're, they're, no, they're lovely pups, there's, there's one here we call Lego, um, 
because when he was really young, he was very lame with, on his hind leg, and so we used to just call him Leg. Uh, and what and sort now, of age are we talking? These are like four and a half months old. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're quite big, quite striking pups, um, well mannered. They've, but they've got, they've all got Tim Timpin's temperament, where he's very foolish and pushes and charges. You know, and when you go in with these or go to get them out, they're all like, um, like pushing you backwards to get out. Uh, Do you like, have a limit on the number of? litters you ha would have in a, in a certain year? Usually, it depends how they fall, but usually we'll only carry two litters at a time, because I could split the habits up, and, but they need room to um, So I've got one litter up in that field, usually start them off there and then move them over. And then as they, when they get a little bit older, when they get you know about nine, ten months, we bring them back. Do you have a, um, a, a wander up to the litter up? Here, what sort of age would they be? They're nine months. Um, they're, they're quite big pups. Well, they're very big pups. They're Troy Bella pups. Um, but we've split the litter in half because um, they were getting a bit feisty. Um, but like, there's three bitches in the other side. So we swap them over during the day. So first, we, one will stay out all night. And then we bring them in first thing in the morning, put the next one out. Swap them over at lunchtime. And then swap them over again in the evening. So whoever's out tonight, um, we'll be in tomorrow night, you know, so it, it rotates, it really goes, you know, it works out quite well. We've got nine months over there, four months over here, so when Dave Firminger, for instance, will send you from last year, Hot Shot and Mission and, and, the, and the pups this year, what sort of age do they come to you? Uh, well, the, the Hot Shot ones, I think they were around 16 months, so they were, you know, they were quite young. They could, th this litter, he held back, um, he scored them a bit later. Um, and they came in later, although they're, you know, they're, they're still relatively young. Pretty much at racing age. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And he's probably his pups, they're just like, I don't know what they do with them, but they're just on a different level. Oh, it's good to hear, yeah. fantastic British breeding success. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I know he puts, they put a lot of thought and time and effort into it. It's not, you know, it's not just going out and buying a dog for 20, 30, 40,000, you know, there's... There's a lot goes into it that people don't appreciate. Um, Do you ever seek his advice about litters and breeding game, or uh, you wear so many hats that you know, you're wrong for trainer, etc. Um, no, no, not really. He, uh, he he just leaves us to get on with it mainly. Um, you know, I'll speak to him, say, you know, I'd like to do this with this litter. Um, you know, go here, go there, or whatever, um, and we'll talk them. But you know, when it comes to the breeding side. He, I do look at what he does, you know, because he has been successful. Um, and he, there's a lot of effort goes into it, and you know, you can see there's a lot of thought that he's putting into it. It's not just throwing two dogs together and seeing what comes out. Uh, there's, it, you can see he, he does put a lot of research into it. And the British breeding per se. I mean, some of these grounds will, will run for you at Romford. Other ones. You know, maybe in the British Bread Open race events. I mean, is it cost effective that way? Uh, it is for me because you know I can swallow up the feed within you know just feeding them. You just you know it doesn't. As an owner, right, it's, it would be expensive because you know, there's a lot goes into it. So I, I can swallow it up, but it, I enjoy the breeding side. I probably enjoy the breeding side and the schooling more than the racing side. You know, I like taking pups to two years old and it's like having an academy um, and then seeing which ones are going to develop and then saying well they've got to go these ones will stay and then the next lot fall um, it's always good to see the, the open race British bred events and it does seem to be a lot more than there was say ten years ago yeah they, they, they're, they're definitely pushing it um, you know and, and rightly so there's, there's, there's a lot of good firm British bred dogs now um, so you know Kevin Hutton's got some John my brother's got some um, there's a lot of some rab and the produce states coming up. Yeah, they have one or two decent <laughs> ones. Um, now and again. <laughs> they do really well actually, you know, so well, you've got to have the right bitches as well. You know, so but I do, I do enjoy the pups. Um, it's a side I probably take more interest in, you know, and I'm very particular in what we do and what they you know, how they're built to lead. You know, we break them to lead very early. Um, and it 
has to be with a lead, not a slip lead. You know, you know you've got to have a lot of patience with it. So, you know, because it, it, usually I'll do it myself. But, you know, we've, we've got a way of doing it now, so um, it's working out well. And the good thing here, because they're the puppy fields on either side of the gallop, anyhow, I've got a lure at the top. Anytime we're working with the dogs, these are out here, they're watching, so they're learning at the same time. Um, usually, we, we don't have too much trouble with them chasing.